Nima, just when I thought I was understanding space-time, you come along and tell me that space-time is doomed. Why? Well, space-time is doomed as a really elementary consequence of the existence of both quantum mechanics and gravity. And we say space-time is doomed because um, uh, if you think space-time is something real, then you should be able to meaningfully talk about separations of space and separations in time of uh, any arbitrary amount that you like. So uh, we can talk about separations in time of seconds, separation in space of meters, but you should also be able to talk about it at arbitrarily short times and arbitrarily short distances. And we know that that's impossible because of gravity, because if we try to probe very, very tiny distances by the uncertainty principle, we have to use a lot of energy and when we get to tiny enough distances, we have to use so much energy that we collapse the little region of space-time we're trying to look at into a black hole. And that makes it impossible to probe what's going on in that region. Because so much energy by E equals mc squared, Einstein's famous equation, means that there's so much mass, the mass and the energy curve space-time, and it all collapses. Exactly. And they make it impossible to see the region you were trying to look at. So this is a very simple thought experiment that... Uh, uh, that takes together the two basic ingredients, quantum mechanics, gravity. You put together quantum mechanics and, and, and gravity and you see that, that it's simply impossible to make sense of space and time separations that are smaller than a very tiny amount. But, uh, but, the, but the, the, the distances and times that we're talking about are the Planck length, the Planck time, Planck length 10 to the minus 33 centimeters, the Planck time 10 to the minus 43 seconds. So we know that space and time, just from this simple argument, can't really make sense uh, because we can't uh, we, we we can't talk about arbitrary separations in space. So let me understand if I, what that would mean. That would mean that you, you cannot have space and and neither space nor time being continuous down to these very 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 small exactly exactly lengths or or or, or moments and that at those moments there's some sort of a separation and does that mean that space and time become quantized and and just like electromagnetic radiation right. has a photon and that everything is in, in, in little discrete bits? That is the most sort of naive idea for what might be happening. Thank you. Okay. That's, uh, <laughs> and, and in fact, the, there are approaches to quantum gravity which take that naive idea very seriously. Okay, good. I'm glad to see uh, somebody takes and, that seriously. Um, but I suspect, and, and many other people suspect, that that's, that's, that's too naive. It's very hard to lay down some kind of discrete lattice-like structure on exactly. space-time. Okay, in a way that's compatible with the laws of relativity. So it's not that. It isn't that there are some atoms of space and time. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's the most naive sort of idea. But there's something much more subtle and interesting going on. In fact, there's an amazing idea known as holography. It begins to give us an idea for, the, for a more radical picture for how this discreteness happens. But holography is the idea that, in fact, it's a drastically smaller number of, uh, of bits of information that you need to specify. That isn't restricted to the volume of the space, but it's instead restri restricted to the boundary of the space. The surface. And, uh, the surface. So that the number of uh, bits that you need to specify um, is the area of the surface in Planck units. Okay? Uh, now, that sounds counterintuitive. It's completely counterintuitive, and that's the reason for the word uh, hologram, is that it's roughly the way in which uh, three-dimensional information is encoded in a two-dimensional hologram. And similarly, what's going on inside a, a volume of space is encoded in very subtle ways in terms of what's going on at the boundary. So, so what would follow from this concept of emergent space and emergent time, emergent space-time? Without understanding emergent space-time, we don't know how to address any of the really fundamental questions that ultimately putting quantum mechanics and gravity we're supposed to address. What happens at the center of a black hole? What, what the origin of the universe means? Emergent time is the one, is, is a clear intellectual bottleneck.